Okay. So uh, last time we did some assembly coding um, and we wrote a code that adds two numbers. And we first made a simple code that just adds two numbers. And then we wrote a more complicated code, which um, a, a more complicated code, which added two 32 bit numbers. So we learned that we need to add carry to higher positions of our bytes. Today, we will do something a little bit different, but it will still be assembly language just so you understand how microcontrollers work and what the job of uh, microcontroller compiler writers is. So um, today we will have the following task. I'll just write task three. So um, some number, let's call it uh, A is uh, located in me, uh, random access memory address uh, 0x00. So for example, in this address, number B is located in random access memory address 0x01. Your task is to write a code that multiplies A times B and stores the result in address. Actually correct will be to write random access memory address. And here's the question in which address. So we will not play around, we will do the complicated thing immediately. So when you calculate nine times nine, the result is 81. You multiply two single digit numbers, you get a two di digit number. You multiply 99 times 99, result is this. So basically multiplying two two digit numbers, you get an a, a, a four digit number. And the same applies to binary. If you multiply two eight bit numbers, then the largest result that you can get is 16 bit number. As a result, if you multiply two eight bit numbers, result will be 16 bits in the largest case scenario. So the result needs to be stored in two memory addresses. And this is why the result of A times B needs to be stored in address pair. For example, address pair 0x02 and 0x03. So the result needs to be stored in address 2 and 3. Okay, so this is our job today. Take two numbers from random access memory, multiply and store the result in random access memory. But here is the catch. Our microcontroller does not have a multiplication uh, instruction. If we go to the instruction set summary of our microcontroller that we build in uh, Logisim, in arithmetic logic unit, uh, instructions, we only have add, add with carry, increment, decrement, negate, subtract, subtract with carry, mov, which is copy, and or XOR, not logical shift left, logical shift right, rotate left and rotate right. So there is no multiplication instruction. So how can we do this? How can we multiply these two numbers if we don't have a multiplier? Can you please write in the chat uh, your opinion, how we could uh, manage this situation? So our microcontroller does not support multiplication. Can we still multiply it somehow?
And we have a correct answer here. Um, so we can use addition to add numbers uh, instead of multiplication. So basically we add a uh, number B to the result A times. So we can add B times the number A to itself and decrease B each time until we get to zero. Exactly. So I will write uh, some kind of C programming language pseudocode in the following way. Let's say, for example, A equals five, B equals four, for example. Or maybe it will be easier if we choose very small numbers. A equals to two, B equals to four. Um, so resulting uh, re result will be, for example, C. And C, we need to initialize equal to zero. So, you know, initially the result is zero. And then we write a simple loop while while a is greater than zero uh, c i'll use this plus equal to b a minus minus and end of the loop okay i'll add a little bit of tabulation so C equals to zero, so result is initially zero, while A is greater than zero, add B to the result, decrease A, and go back to the beginning. And once A decreases to zero, the C will be A times B counted in, and then the result will be, I'll just write in brackets, store result to, uh, Ram. Okay. <clears throat> so this is our pseudo code. And I'll copy it and maybe I will use. Mm -hmm. This was what we did last time. Okay. So I'll just make a new code. So I'll paste it. Language is assembly. So we get a little bit of. Uh, highlight. Okay, so as we spoke last time, since our Notepad++ uses uh, line numbering starting from uh, one, and code starts from zero, and we will have today a lot of branches, then we will just add at the zero address this dummy instruction load immediate r0 0 and our code starts with instruction number one so um the first thing that we need to do is we need to copy uh these numbers a and b from random access memory to registers because we can only do mathematical uh, things on registers not on uh, not on ram addresses so the first instructions would be load from re ram into register r0 from address 0x00 so this would be read a so, and I'll just write here A equals to two. So let's just assume that register R0 is used for A. And B, we will use, for example, register R1 is used for B. C, since uh, the result can be up to 16 bits long, C will be a uh, two registers. So register register three and register two are used for C result. And in little endian, so R2 is the lower part and R3 is the higher part of the result. So the first thing we do is we read A. Second thing is we need to read B, so load from register into uh, load from RAM 
into register R1 from address 0x01. So this is this is read B. Next thing is, uh, well, since it's possible that A is equal to zero from the start, for example, someone wants to uh, test our code and writes A equals zero, B equals zero, then A will be equal to zero immediately. So the result needs to have zero loaded into it in the beginning. So um, we need to do it and we have this uh, instruction load immediate or load a number into a register. So LDI is the name of instruction in all assembly languages. So register R2, we copy zero. So C equals zero part one. I'll write like this, LDI R3 zero is C equals to zero part two. Okay, uh, so on 8-bit processor, this is done on each byte separately. In 32-bit processors, if we, for example, have 64 bits numbers, then it's the same. Uh, these halves are set separately. <clears throat> so next thing is we, uh, this our while uh, loop begins with testing if A is greater than zero. So the question is, how can we test if A is greater than zero or not? So uh, our goal is to set or clear zero flag in status register. So right now we will be using for the first time in our lives this status register. And the idea is the following. Arithmetic logic unit, when it performs some operation, it also sets the flags in status register to their new values. And we have uh, four flags, signed overflow, negativity, zero and carry. So zero flag is set if all bits of the result are zero. So for example, right now, result is zero. So zero flag is set, okay? So, um, and then we have instructions called branch instructions, which jump or don't jump to a new place in code, depending on whether the flags in register are set or clear. So we have instructions, <clears throat> for example, branch if equal, if zero is one, if zero flag is one, then it will jump. And if not, then it will not jump to a new location. And so on for every uh, flag, there's option if it's one or zero, carry flag one or zero, negative flag one or zero. And as you can see, for example, here, um, branch if carry clear is the same as branch if same or higher. It just happens so that if you subtract one number from another and carry is zero, it means that the first number was greater or equal to the second number. So carry equals to zero can be used both as same or higher test or simply as carry clear test. And the same goes for this branch if equal. So branch if equal is the same as branch if zero flag set uh, and we would need to do something. We need to check out if A is equal to zero. If it is, it means that zero flag will be set and we will use this branch if equal to go to the end of the code, which basically just stores the result. So we need to figure out what could we do to test if A equals to zero. And we have two options. First, the simple but not so good option in this case is compare. So there are special compare instructions in the CPU, which basically subtract numbers from one another, but unlike arithmetic logic unit instructions, the result is not written back to the register. So they subtract numbers 
they set flags, but the result is not stored anywhere. So you could, for example, uh, compare register R0 to R1 by subtracting one from another, but the result is not written anywhere. It just updates the flags. So we could, for example, load zero in one of the registers and compare A to zero, but it uses one extra register. Right now we're already using four registers. And if we want to write a good code, we should use as little number of registers as possible. And in this case, to compare to zero, actually, we can do the following. We can, for example, do a logical or on the number itself, it will update the flags, but a number or with itself is the same number. So for example, one, I don't know, I'll write it here, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one. If we do logical or on the number itself, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one. If we do or on itself, the result will be the same, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one but the process went through arithmetic logic unit and the flags were updated. And if the result is equal to zero, then, um, then the flags, the zero flag will be set. And if it, the number was not equal to zero, then something not zero or with itself will give something not equal to zero and the zero flag will not be set. Alternatively, we could also do or uh, we could also do and on number itself because if we do and on number itself, one and one is one, zero and zero is zero. So this would also write the same number back into its original register, but it would update the flags without changing the value of the register. So what we will do here is we will do or on A. So R0, R0. And I'll write a comment here, uh, which is basically calculate A greater than zero by doing or on A itself and updating zero flag. Z flag. So basically we when we do R on A, the result is still A, but if it was zero, then zero flag will be set. So now let's say that A was equal to zero. If A was equal to zero, then we need to jump to end of our code uh, because there's nothing to multiply. Zero times anything is zero, so we can just exit this code. So it can be done using branch instruction. Branch if zero equal to one. So the instruction name is BREQ. So branch if equal to, uh, for example, the location, the name of the code location will be done. If A equals to zero, jump to done. Okay. And this done will be someplace later in our code. So for example, here will be done and there will be some code, whatever. Uh, we don't know what code it is yet, but we will just write it later. So, however, if A is not yet equal to zero, if A is for example, two, then we need to add B to the result, we need to do this addition. And since C is consists of two registers, 
we need to add B to the bottom part of the register and carry to the top part. For example, um, if it's, for example, two times 255, then result is zero. Zero plus 255 is 255. But then we will do addition again, plus 255. And as you can see, the result is, it has um, this overflow, which will, when we add bottom uh, parts of C and B, uh, it will result in carry bit being set. And actually the good thing is it can be either zero or one. It's impossible that you add two eight bit numbers and this part is for example, greater than one, two or five or whatever. It can only be one bit overflow. So this bit will be saved in carry. And then what we can do is if carry bit is set, then add one to the top part of C. So I'll just write it right here. So what we need to do is calculate uh, C equals C plus B. So add uh, to C bottom part R2 B, which is in R1. And oftentimes the bottom part is called low. So I'll write C underscore low, like L low part plus equal to B. And then if we add these two numbers, addition is a function in arithmetic logic unit, which updates the status register flags. And if uh, adding these numbers together gave us overflow, this one extra bit, then carry bit will be set. And what we can do now is we can write a branch. If carry bit is set, then we need to add one. But in assembly language, unfortunately, everything needs to be thought of the opposite. So the next line would be increment R3, which is um, C part high uh, we increment by one if necessary. I think it's like this. Um, but we only do it if the bottom part had overflow. So if it didn't have overflow, we need to jump over this instruction. And this is why we will use this instruction if carry bit is clear, then, uh, sorry, if carry bit is clear then jump so branch if carry clear to skip um, skip int so basically if uh, no overflow in bottom part of C, then don't increment uh, top half of C. So we add bottom parts. If there is no overflow, we jump over this increment R3 instruction. If there was overflow, carry bit is set and it will not jump to skip increment. So we increment C top part if necessary. Then the name of next line is this skip int. And what happens next? So we have calculated this C plus B correctly with bottom part and top part. And now we need to decrease A by one. So this instruction will be that R zero. A. So this line is A minus minus basically. And what we need to do then is we need to jump back to the beginning of this while loop 
to test if a is equal to zero or not yet. So what we need to do is jump to a line that I will call loop one, because maybe we have more than one loop. And this loop one is located in the place where we um, calculate if a is equal to zero. So loop one begins here. Okay, so it decremented a by one. It jumps back to the beginning of the loop. It tests if a has reached zero. And let's say it it has reached zero. Then it means that zero flag is set and it will jump to done. So actually no more lines here, done. And done is that we need to uh, send result to random access memory, which is basically uh, str stored to RAM, register R2 in memory location 0x02, as uh, given in the, the text of uh, the task, and store register R3 to zero x zero three and then as usual and jump and okay so this would be our code assembly code that multiplies two numbers checks out if first number is zero or not if not then adds a second number to result if there was overflow it means that we need to increment the top part of the result number then we decrement our loop counter number number a and then we jump back to the beginning and once r0 reaches zero we jump to done and done sends result out to uh, random access memory. Okay, so now we can just use our instruction set quick reference and here all instructions are also, it's also given how to translate instructions to machine code. So to run this uh, code on our microcontroller, we need to translate assembly language to uh, machine code. So let's do that quickly. So first instruction LDR. Uh, in our case, translating is really simple because there's the beginning, first register, number or action and the second register. So quite simple. LDR. LDR starts with three, zero X three, because it starts with zero, zero, one, one, zero X three. Next four bits is the register number, register R zero. And next uh, two nibbles is memory location zero, zero. Okay, we have a question probably. you mean something like this, right? Like this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, translating, so LDR is three, register number is zero and address is zero, zero. Next is LDR beginning is the same, it's three, then register is number one and address is zero, one. Next is LDI load immediate. LDI is 0010. It is two. Um, hmm. Then register number two and number is zero that we want to load. Next is zero X LDI instruction is instruction number two register is register three and number that we want to load is zero zero again. 
Next is OR. OR is inside arithmetic logic unit operation. So first four bits are zero. Then first register is register zero. OR is instruction number nine in arithmetic logic unit operations. And the second register is also register zero. We want to do OR on itself to update flags. Branch it equal branch is 0, 1, 1, 0, so it's 0, x, 6. Branch if equal, equal means 5, so I put 5 here. It's the code for branch if equal. And the address to which to jump is done, and done is located in line number 12, so it is instruction number 12, and 12 is a is 10, B is 11, C is 12, so I guess it's 0, C. Next is add. Add is arithmetic logic unit operation on register R2 plus addition is 0, and register number 1 is added. Next is branch if carry clear. Branch of carry clear is zero. So branch is zero x six. Uh, carry clear is zero. Uh, skip increment location is 10, which is zero a in hexadecimal format. Next is increment R3. Increment is arithmetic logic unit instruction. So it's zero. Register R3 is three. Increment is operation number two. And last four bits, second register is not used. So I just put zero. And next is decrement. So it's zero X arithmetic logic unit instruction zero. Register is zero. Decrement is instruction number three and second register is zero. And then jump to loop one. So it's like closing bracket of this um, while loop. Um, jump. Jump is five, zero x five. Uh, next four bits is zero. And then address to which to jump is address number five. So it's zero five. Then store. Store is 0, 1, 0, 0, so it's 4, 0, x, 4. Which register? Register number 2. Which location? 0, 2. And here, 0, x, 4. Uh, register number 3 and location number 0, 3. And jump end is 0, x, 5, 0. And end is 0, d, I think. Because 15 is f. Oh, so here is E. 15 is F and 14 is E. So this is the machine code of our program. And now we need to type it into our uh, logisim thing. So what I can do is I can right click clear contents and then I can edit contents and I can just type it all in. So at address zero, we want to put our dummy instruction to zero, 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 because notepad starts numbering from one. So we need to pad our code with one instruction so that we don't have to recalculate these uh, labels every time. So instruction number zero, I just add two, zero, zero, zero. Next here, our code starts, it's Three zero zero zero, three one zero one, two two zero zero, two three zero. Uh, oops, two three zero zero, zero zero nine zero, six five zero C, zero two zero one, six zero zero A, zero three two zero. Zero zero three zero five oh oh five four two oh two four three oh three 
and five zero zero e maybe it's going to work i can just check out in previous lessons code let's see because if it doesn't work i don't want to bore you looking for the mistake Okay, looks like it will work. Maybe, I don't know. Um, so I close it, the code is here. And now let's just check out if this code works. So I clear RAM, I reset CPU, and I write in some numbers. For example, two and four. Two times four is eight. So let's start our program. The first instruction is just dummy padding. So it doesn't do anything. The next one is read regist uh, address number zero to register number zero. I did it. Let's check out in register, register number R0 has two, register number R1 has zero inside. Let's do next instruction. It reads four into register number one. Here it is register R1 has number four inside. Then uh, next is we load zeros into this uh, C. So right now it's zero, but for example, if it had some old value, we need to clear it. So before we did anything, register R2 and R3 were cleared to zero. Okay, next instruction is compare register, test register R0 for zero, which is basically oring it with itself. So right now it has content two and it is input into uh, arithmetic logic unit. As you can see, A is two and B is two because it's the same uh, number register R0, which contains two. It selects operation number nine. So which is or it with itself and the result is two. So result is the same, but flags are cleared since it's not equal to zero, zero flag is not set. So let's continue. If it was set, it would now jump to the end, but since it isn't, it moves to the next operation, which is addition. So right now, R2, R3 is zero. Let's do next instruction. And R2 is equal to four. So B is added to C. Now it tests if it was an overflow and we need to add something to the top part of C as well. And since it failed the test, it did not do this operation. It jumped to the next instruction. Uh, next instruction is decrement uh, R0 by one. So instead of two, R0 is now equal to one. And now it just jumps back to the beginning of loop. So if I set clock high, what we see is the program counter was 11. It should go to 12, but since we have this jump instruction, instead it takes the bottom eight bits of our instruction and copies it into the program counter. So we see that the new value will be five. So it will jump back to the instruction number five. And here it is. Now it compares a register R0 to zero. Then if it is zero, it will jump to the end. But since it's not, it skips and it goes to the next instruction, which is addition. And here we can check out. So it added eight. Next instruction is if carry bit is set, uh, then if carry bit is clear, then jump to one instruction ahead. 
And this jumping is performed by these uh, elements. So it takes status register, it splits in all four bits, bit zero, one, two, and three, which is uh, assigned overflow, negative uh, zero, negative and carry bits. And then it compares it to the bit that we need. So we wrote branch if uh, zero. So this carry zero is compared with zero. And the result um, means that we need to jump. Um, in this case, zero means jump. One would mean don't jump because in this case, we have this multiplexer which selects whether program counter will receive previous value plus one. So it goes to the next instruction or it uh, is updated with the bottom eight bits of the instruction word. And in this case, since zero flag is equal to our uh, carry flag is equal to uh, the bit that we compare, then program counter will jump two instructions ahead. So it had eight, it will jump to 10 instead of nine. This is how branching happens. So and on falling edge, it, it skipped an instruction, jumped to one ahead to zero A. So we see zero A is here and now its location is zero A. Now it um, decrements A and jumps to the beginning. Now, register zero is zero. So when it does the test on itself, as you can see, um, when it does the test uh, in status register, zero flag is set because zero or zero is equal to zero. And since the result was zero, then the zero flag is set in status register. So the status register is zero, zero, one, zero. And next instruction is branch if zero flag set. And as you can see, zero flag is set. We can pair it to one from this uh, instruction and the result uh, matches. So program counter is told to jump to not to instruction number seven, but to instruction number 12. So it jumps over the regular code to the end. So as you can see, it jumped to the end where it stores the result. So it writes a to bottom part of random access memory address and top part zero to the top part. And now it is a jump and jump end. So it's done. Okay, so now let's multiply some other numbers. For example, let's test it on 153 times uh, 38, for example. So I need to convert these numbers to hex. So 153 in hex is 99. So I write 99 and 38. Oops. 38, for example, is in hex decimal 26. Maybe let's take something more exotic. For example, in hex 2D is 45. Uh, to the so that you see that these are hex numbers you don't think that it's 99 times 26 and then then you blame me that the result is wrong so in hex 99 times uh to d equals to this number so it should be for a uh, nibble number two byte number so i'll clear this to zero and I reset my program and uh, let's just check out if it works. So it reads the first number, second number. 
So it read the numbers, then it clears uh, registers R0 and R1, uh, R2 and R3, and then it does the addition. So now is the question uh, for you, since you are IT, it will be very easy for you. So why do we have to store R3 in RAM? As you can see, when we multiply such big numbers as 153 times 38 or 45, the result is not just eight bits, it uh, expands to 16 bits. As you can see, after a couple of additions, 45 plus 45 plus 45 plus 45 plus 45, the result is so big that it already doesn't fit in eight bits. So we need to um, expand the result to 16 bits. So they are in R2, R3. So right now, after just a couple of uh, loops, R3 already is incremented to one. So it's already greater than zero. And so the result, both bytes need to be stored in RAM because it can be 16 bit number. We could theoretically write if R3 equals to zero, then don't write it to random access memory, but it's, you know, it's extra code that is not really necessary. You can always write this zero in the result. Besides in this random access memory location, maybe there's some old data. So you definitely always need to overwrite them to new value. So multiplying two 8-bit numbers, the result will be 16 bits, which is over two uh, memory locations. Okay, so question to you is, is this code good? How do you think? Maybe it's possible to do it better. So first question is you need, as uh, IT engineers, you need to calculate what is the O of N of this number or better to put in words, what is the worst case of number of loops that this uh, code needs to do uh, in this multiplication algorithm? So um, you can just calculate in worst case scenario, what is the most number of clock ticks that uh, happen to multiply two eight bit numbers? For example, if first number is zero, then there is almost zero clocks. It just reads the numbers. It sees that it's zero and it just stores the result and exits. But exactly how, what is the worst case scenario, most number of uh, ticks that perform this loop. So compare, not equal, add, increment, decrement, and jump back to the beginning. What's the highest number of times this loop needs to be done? Please write in the chat. I'll just keep clicking because it's still calculating. So I've been clicking quite a while. Let's see how far, what's my progress. So it started at 99 and now it's at 80. So we are approaching the end slowly. It's something like, uh, I don't know, 10% calculated. So what is the largest number of loops that uh, can uh, happen in this code? the largest number of loops that we can have in this code. So number of loops is determined by the first number. So um, the largest number that we can give to A is 255. So this loop can take up to 255 times. Uh, 
it needs to be done 255 times the most. So the worst case scenario is basically when we multiply 255 times 255. Even if you would make some algorithm that checks out which number is smaller and that smaller number is A and the bigger number is B, if we have 255 times 255, uh, this loop needs to be done 255 times. Each loop, we can actually count how many instructions we have in the loop. One is comparison, two is branch, three is addition, four is branch, and then five is increment, then decrement and jump. And assuming that each of these instructions takes one clock cycle, we have seven times, uh, we have seven instructions per loop. So the approximately largest number of uh, loops that we can have or instructions in this multiplication is 255 times seven. This many clock cycles to multiply two numbers in the worst case scenario. Now, uh, another question. If we assume that we have a microcontroller that runs on one megahertz or one million instructions per second, you know, Intel processors run in gigahertz, but in microcontrollers usually have something like one megahertz, 16 megahertz, maybe 32 megahertz, maybe 72 megahertz, but usually it's, you know, a couple of megahertz up to a couple tens of megahertz. So assuming that microcontroller runs at one megahertz or one million instructions per second, how long will it take in the worst case scenario to calculate uh, the result of 255 times 255? Can you tell me? So um, actually in Logisim, there is this thing called simulate. Uh, ticks enabled. And Logisim automatically ticks the clock. And I can select simulate tick frequency and I can actually increase it to, for example, two kilohertz. And as you can see, after some while, it has actually finished the program. And let's see if it has calculated the result correctly. So, um, ta -ta 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 -ta, programmer in hex 99 times 2D is equal to 1AE5. This is our result. And as we can see in the random access memory, it's actually stored correctly. So E5 is bottom part and it's written in lower random access memory address and 1A is a higher part. It's written in the higher part of random access memory. <clears throat> so yeah, this is correct. And so we can say that our CPU actually works correctly. Oops, I accidentally deleted the result for the preset and simulate it and I bought. Okay, so we could say that our assembly code actually works correctly. So as I was asking, so since we have um, 255 times a loop, which contains seven instructions uh, inside. So we can, we need up to 1,785 clock ticks to multiply two numbers, okay? So assuming that microcontroller runs at one 
uh, megahertz, one million ticks per second. So we can multiply this with each tick takes 0 0.00000 one uh, seconds. So one one over one million. So multiplying two numbers with this algorithm can take up to 1.785 milliseconds. So I can calculate by thousand, multiply by thousand. And so this algorithm needs 1.785 uh, milliseconds to multiply two eight bit numbers uh, at one megahertz clock frequency. Of course, if we're using Intel processor that run, runs, for example, at five gigahertz, then we can divide this number by 5,000 and then it will only take 0.3 uh, microseconds. But still, my question to you would be the following. Can you come up with some better algorithm that calculates a multiplication of two numbers faster? So is there a new question to our PhDs and chapters? Can you explain again how R3 is incremented? How the high part of C is stored in R3? So um, storing a high part of C basically is our decision. We need two registers to store C because we know that it can be 16 um, bit number. So we just come up with our from our head that we will store it in register R2, R3 pair, and R3 will be the higher part and R2 will be the lower part. And we add B, this 8-bit number, only to the lower part. But if overflow happens, we need to add also one to the higher part from, you know, from the following principle. When we add 8 bit number to 16 bit number, it's the same as adding two 16 bit numbers. Uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, first number is B, for example, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, B, 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 some bits we don't know. And C is 16 bits, like this. So, when we add them together, we add bottom part to bottom part, but it can happen that C is so big, bottom part of C is so big that bottom part of C plus bottom part of C, uh, B uh, creates this overflow, but this overflow can be only one and it's stored in carry. So if carry is set, we increment the top part of C. So this is done here. Uh, if, it, if it's not Z one, then don't increment. If it is one, then increment. Um, so now we need to come up with some algorithm that multiplies numbers faster. And um, usually, you know, without even much knowledge, there is this thing that all microcontrollers and microprocessors have these instructions that shift bits. And oftentimes people just, just ask right away, can we use bit shifting to somehow speed up the algorithm, right? So just oftentimes without even knowing it, people just intuitively ask, can we use bit shifts? And in this case, to multiply two numbers, it's actually possible to use bit shifting to multiply them. And let's just, uh, I don't know, I'll just try to explain to you, but probably you're really smart. Maybe you already know this. So let's just quickly go through this. First thing that we need to uh, understand is how bit shift works. So let's say I have binary number. Maybe I'll just write it in calculator. So first, I don't know, 
theorem that I'll tell you is shifting bits left by one is the same as multiplying by two. I'll just write it here. A times two is the same as A shifted by one position. A bits shifted by one position. So I select programmer calculator. I write, for example, number six. If I choose shift by one, the result is 12. All bits are shifted ahead and zero is pushed in. So, you know, no random numbers appear. So shifting by one is the same as multiplication by two. <clears throat> shifting two times is the same as multiplication by eight. Sh sorry, by four. Shifting three times is the same as multiplication by eight and so on, right? <clears throat> so I shift this once more. Uh, sorry, two, two, two. Six, I shifted by one once is 12. Shifted by one second time is 24. So this is four times six. Shifted by one once more is 48. 48 divided by six is eight. So I'll write it here. A shifted by two is the same as A times four. A shifted by three is the same as A times eight. And in general form, you know, A times two to the power of N is the same as A shifted by N. This is a thing which is highly and wildly used in computers because all processors have bit shift built in. So instead of multiplying by 256, for example, you just shift all bits by eight positions. So this is wildly used. And let's check this math out. So let's say we want to calculate, I don't know, uh, for example, 25 times uh, 4. So um, we can rewrite it splitting one of the numbers. You know, for the sake of example, I'll split the bigger number into its binary form or into its base two components. So 25 is um, da, 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 decimal 25. Let's see. It is um, 0, 4, 8, 16. It is 16 plus 8 plus 1. 16 plus 8 is 24, plus 1 is uh, 25, times 4. Uh, so 25 is 16 plus 8 plus 1 times 4 is the same as 16 times, I don't know, 4 is a bad number, maybe I'll, I'll set something like 6, so that you don't think that this is somehow to the expansion. So um, <clears throat> 16 times 6 plus 8 times 6 plus 1 times 6. And since 16 is 2 to the power of 4 and 8 is 2 to the power of 3 and 1 is 2 to the power of 0, we can rewrite it exactly as 6 shifted by 4 plus 6 shifted by 8 uh, is the power of 3 to the power of 3. So plus 6 shifted by 0 because 1 is 2 to the power of 0, zero and um, because shifting is lower priority than addition, then we would also need to put these brackets here. So we expand one of the numbers into its 
binary form, you know, to base two uh, components. And multiplying with base two component is the same as shifting bits. So basically it's the same. I don't know, we can check it out. Um, so, and we can use memory. Does it have memory? Six. Six. Okay, this memory doesn't work well, so we cannot accumulate anything. So let's just check out. So six shifted by zero is six. Um, six shifted by three is 40, sorry, is 48. And, oh, I'll just write it equal to. Mm -hmm. So we have some good ideas here. Um, six shifted by four is 96 plus six shifted by three is 48 and six shifted by zero is six. And let's check out if the result is correct. Maybe it's not, maybe I failed. 96 plus 48 plus six is 125. If we divide by six, 25. So this algorithm kind of works. And here's the idea. You start with some number, then add the multiple count each time the last number is one, and then shift right. Ah, equals two. 150. So yeah, I'll just, you know, I'll just put this uh, same thing in a different words. So basically we take two numbers and what when we expand 25 into its binary form, its binary form is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, if I'm correct, 25. Two, two, two. So 25 is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, like this. Basically, where there is one, it is some kind of power of two. So this is zero, this is one, two, three, and this is four. So it's the same as here shifted by four, shifted by three, and shifted by zero. So what we need to do, well, for example, what my offer is, we take, this is our number A, and then we have some number B. And the algorithm would be the following. If bit of A is equal to one, then we add B to the result. Then we shift B and check out the next bit of A. If it's zero, we don't add it to the result, but we shift B once anyway. So this would be uh, six shifted by one. Uh, then we shift it by another one, by another one. And once we reach the next one, our second number B, which is six, will be shifted three times already. Zero times, one time, two times, and three times. And it, since this bit in A is one, we add it, then we shift it again. S next bit of A is one, so we add it, we shift again, zero, 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 don't add. So let's try to write some C programming pseudo code. Uh, that does what I tried to explain just now. <laughs> so um, our code will be, for example, the following. So A equals, I don't know, 25, 
b equals six. Uh, so we first set c equals to zero. And then we do the following. If a or one is true, so if bit zero of a is one, then we add b to the result. So if a or zero x zero one is true, then c equals c plus b, or you know for shorthand c plus equals to b. So we add b to c. Then, regardless of that, we need to shift B for the next comparison. So once we reach bit three of A, then um, B will be shifted three times. So B shifted equals to one. So basically we shift B by one to the left and actually uh, we can a little bit speed up this algorithm because since top three bits are zero then we could just shift a to the right every time every time compare only the bottom bit and once a is equal to zero we exit this loop and since top three bits are zeros once we have shifted uh, five times, A will already be zero and we will exit the loop faster. So what I'll do here is I'll calculate A shift right equals one. So I don't know if you know this shorthand writing. So it's the same as B equals B shifted by one to the right, uh, to the left and a equals to A shifted uh, right by one. And we repeat this while A greater than zero or while A is not equal to zero. I don't know how you like write it better. So this algorithm, so now I'll just uh, indent it a little bit. So doing OR on microcontroller is easy. Addition is easy. Shifting bits is easy. So basically this code should happen pretty fast. And then the question is, what is the worst case number of loops that this code performs to multiply two numbers? Let's say we want to multiply 255 and 255. Can you maybe guess uh, what's the worst case number of loops that this code will perform? Well, worst case scenario, it will do this loop eight times correct you're saying correctly eight times because a is eight bit number and we can only shift it eight times until it shifts all bits out and reaches zero so yes eight times compare it to this so this uh could be 255 times this just eight times i don't know i think if we divide 250 256 divided by eight i think is uh Oh, it's 32. Okay, so basically this method should be 32 times faster than um, the first one. So basically if one code runs 32 minutes, this, this new code will run only one minute. If we have, for example, many multiplications that we need to do 
in the code. So this we could, for example, write in assembly and use it that way. Hmm. So since we have only seven plus five is 12 minutes left, I don't know, can we manage to write this code in assembly? Or maybe I leave it as a homework because to the other group, this is considered the homework. So I give you this uh, example C code and now you need to write it in assembly. I don't know if I have published this homework, but basically the homework is the following, write a faster multiplication algorithm on this microcontroller, for example, using this C code. If you want, you can go on the internet and try to find even faster algorithm. Maybe it's possible, maybe it's not, I don't know. Uh, if you don't want, you just need to write this code into assembly. So I'll write in this in these braces, store result in RAM. So, and the second task would be, uh, maybe it's too complicated. Let's just leave it at that. So your homework is to write a code in assembly and run it on our microcontroller in Logisim, which multiplies two numbers using any algorithm that is faster than this naive addition algorithm. For example, this algorithm that I wrote you here in the C code. So that is your homework. I will, I guess I have to open uh, a new section in Ortus for this homework so you can upload it. And what you would need to do is you would need to write assembly code with comments uh, so that I can check out how you did it. And then you also need to translate it to machine code, write it in Logisim and run it with some numbers and check out if it works. Remember that you can always use the stick ticks enabled so it does it automatically. And then, um, and then you put both files, the code, txt file and logisim file in a zip archive and you upload it as a homework in Artus so I can check out if you did it or not. Okay, so that is your homework. If it takes you two hours to do the homework is normal uh, because in the beginning assembly language really breaks the brain. It's pretty complicated, uh, you know, if you haven't really done it ever in your life. So Try to do it. If it takes two hours, it's fine. It's normal. Um, yeah, and then upload it. So do you have some questions maybe? So we have tomorrow a uh, lab. Uh, in this lab, you will be doing some more work in the Logisim. So, so we meet also tomorrow. I'll just post the Logisim homework. Oh yes, so somebody also asked me about this final exam. Uh, final exam, of course, will be online. Uh, I don't want to go to school and get a disease from you. <laughs> Or, or vice versa. <laughs> so uh, of course uh, we will do it online over the internet. And actually in previous uh, years, if a person had all homeworks uploaded in Ortus and also all tests done in Ortus, then I just put automatically a good mark well, if the if the homework wasn't totally the copy of another person's homework, um, and uh, actually, usually nobody really does the exam because if you do the homework, you don't have to do exam. So the idea is the following: if two people hand in exactly totally copy paste the same um, homework, 
then I, I just uh, I don't reject it. I just divide the mark by two because, you know, assuming each of you did half of the work, so each of you gets half of the mark. In uh, one year, something like six uh, people handed in the same homework, so I just divided the, the mark by six. So uh, 10 divided by six, you get something around two. Oh, okay, so scientific, 10 divided by six, uh, each person got two. Okay, so. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So in the beginning, you did uh, the homeworks in pairs. Okay, I could accept that. Okay, uh, I could accept that, but uh, you know, maybe. Uh, especially these programming codes, now you can do them alone. So you can do them alone. Um, yeah. In Logisim, there isn't much uh, difference between the works because basically you just do the same uh, thing. But here in programming, you know, you can write your own code. You can write your own uh, comments. It's best to comment every line, especially in assembly, because in assembly it's just instructions, register names, it's impossible to follow through. If I don't write comments on this code, after just a few hours looking at this code, I wouldn't understand what it does. So it's important to write comments and oftentimes also add the C pseudo code so that I can check out, okay, this is the C code and this is the assembly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so in, in this uh, assembly code, it's really simple to see that two people have done the same work. If every comment is the same, and even if typos are the same, for example, two people in the same place, right? Uh, like, uh, like, like this. For example, there's a quickly a quick writing mistake, and I see it in two uh, homeworks in the same location. Well, it's clear that these people just copied the same code from one another with the same typo mistake. You know, you can do it better. Okay, so if no more questions, then we can finish this lesson. So, and you can do the homework. <clears throat>